Okay, you finished editing your sequence, your video, and your audio are all where you want them to be. You're ready to export this file. What you want to do is come up to your uh, project window, and you want to select your clip. There, you'll notice that there's raw footage and sequences here. You can actually use Premiere to export raw footage as well. In this case, though, we're going to export a sequence. So, once we select it, you'll notice that it's highlighted then you'll want to come up here to file and you're going to select export and then media. Once you do this a new dialog box is going to open up that's showing you your transcoder and all the options available to you. You want to come down here to where it says source range and you'll notice that it's uh, showing work area which actually is uh, in and an out point that we've set in the actual sequence itself. You can override this by coming over here and you'll want to mark an endpoint. As soon as you mark an endpoint, this is going to change from work area to custom. Let's say you only want to export this portion of the footage, which again is great to use when you're trying when you have raw footage and you're just trying to export uh, clips. So once we mark an endpoint, that's changed to custom, and then we'll come here and we'll find an out point. We'll want to take it right before this uh, footage that I've composited together in After Effects. We'll take this shot as our out point. And you'll notice now that we have a clip that's going to be 11 seconds and 29 frames long if we pulled the export uh, button right now. In this case, though, we want to export the entire sequence, so we'll select entire sequence. And there you can see that you have three options the custom, which would be an in and out point that you've marked manually work area which would be an in and out point that you've marked within the actual sequence itself or entire sequence. In most cases you'll probably use entire sequence. In this case we can see that this sequence is 29 seconds long. This is an actual spot that I've added together using camera footage and uh, footage that I've composited together in After Effects. So we're good here. Next thing we'll do is we're going to come up here to where it says format and we're going to actually select uh, and actually let me tell you this this will actually default to what you used last so it looks like I probably was exporting footage to be ingested by Avid which would be an MXF OP1A XD cam HD 50 bit so we'll want to change this to H.264, which is the codec we want to use. In this case, they're actually calling it a format. What uh, Premiere does, it'll take a look at your source footage, and it tells you here that it's 1920 by 1080, and it's 29.97 frames per second. It uses that information, and what it does is comes over here and it'll look at all these presets that are pre-programmed into Premiere or Media Encoder, and it'll find the the setting that's as close to your uh, camera original or footage as possible. And in this case, it happens to tell us that it's HD TV, 1080p, 2997. So again, that's that's a good starting point. Uh, However, if you were going to output something else, uh, right now we're trying to output something to FTP, but if you were going to output something for an iPad or whatever, you have all kinds of settings here. Uh, there's a YouTube HD, but uh, this does a great job of looking at the footage and selecting the closest setting to the camera original as possible and using that as the default selection. So we'll go ahead and use that. We're going to make a slight adjustment though. If we output this file as is, it would give us a file that's 111. This XD cam footage, if we output it in its native format, which we can actually do by just selecting right up here, and what it'll do is look at what the original is, and it's going to output it in the same exact codec and uh, the same exact settings, and that's a great tool to use, and that would give us a file that's actually uh, just slightly under 300 megabytes. Uh, I believe it's 295, actually, and uh, that's a great tool to use. Um, we're not going to do that, though, in this case. We're going to go ahead and let it, using this, it's telling us the setting that's the closest within this Kodak or format, as they're calling it, and if we were to change that, and uh, this was originally an XD cam, which at a 50 megabit is a MPEG-2 file. 
if we when we switch this to H.264, one of the specs that uh, were put forth by the engineers that made this Kodak is, is that it's supposed to be at least half the size of MPEG-2. So you can see if we had a 300 megabit file, it's now down to 111 just by changing that from an MPEG-2 to H.264 or what they call MPEG-4 format. Um, that's a great savings, but we can do better. What we're going to do next is come over here to where it says uh, video. We want to make sure that video is selected in this tab. And then we're going to come scroll down. And you'll see under bitrate settings, there's a bitrate encoding setting. And there's three options here. There's a CBR, which is constant, const, constant bitrate, or a VBR, which is variable bitrate, one and two pass. A one pass. We'll go ahead and set these numbers first because it'll probably be easier to explain. Uh, you have a maximum bit rate. We'll go ahead and set that at 50. We're going to tell it, though, to target 10 megabits. Once you've done that, you'll see that this file's gone down to 35 megabytes. Again, we're using a variable bit rate pass, which is going to target 10 but if if it needs 50 uh, let's say that you're you have a bunch of sound bites or very low motion clips it's going to go ahead and hit those at 10 and then if you have uh, let's say a missile shoot or a, a hockey game or something uh, with a lot of motion in it it would actually use the 50 megabytes if it needs so a uh, variable bitrate one pass what it's going to do is actually take that those parameters that you've input and it'll run through the file and it'll make those adjustments on the fly. What we want to do is use a VBR2 pass and it's going to take those same parameters, run through the file one time without actually transcoding the file, look at the file and make its best guess or calculations as to how to best output that file. After that first pass, it'll start back over and actually transcode the file on the second time. So a VBR2 pass is going to take twice as long as a VBR1 pass or a constant bit rate. It's going to give you a lot better quality. And uh, the only downside is that it's going to take twice as long. And uh, when you have a short clip, even uh, this is a 29-second clip, but even if you had a 10-minute clip, it would be worth the extra time. If you had an hour-long clip, then it starts to become a judgment call on your part. For our purposes, though, we're going to use VBR2 pass. We're going to target it at 10, and we're going to tell it that it, it has 50 megabytes, and if it wants to use it, go ahead and use it. Its estimate is that that file would be output at about a 35 megabytes. So we've gone from 300 megabytes down to 35 megabits. And uh, before we output this file, what we always want to do is come over here and we're actually looking at the camera original or f the uh, sequence in this case. What we want to check is the output. By clicking this tab here, we're actually looking at what the file is going to look like when we output it. And uh, you'll always want to do this. This is actually uh, a great time to kind of scroll through the footage and what you'll always want to check for is if you notice that your people are short and fat or tall and skinny you're probably outputting anamorphic footage which we don't want to do so everything looks good uh, you can see that the camera originals look exactly like the output file which is what we want it to be now we can come up to here and we can actually rename this clip and we can uh, tell it where we want it to save the file that it's going to output and uh, I believe this defaults to where the last file was output in this case it happens to be going to our desktop which is great I'm going to go ahead and take this three off of it and uh, we'll go ahead and save that so now we know where to get the file when it's done there's one other option I'd like to show you real quick and that's the save preset I always find that it's uh, wise to go ahead and save this preset so when we output this file um, if there's a slight problem with it once we get the finished product we can always come back to this preset and uh, 
open it back up and have those same exact settings and then make that slight change or variation on that transcode that we need. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and name this H264VBR Oops, I'm sorry. VBR two pass, and we want to tell it that it's 10 through 50, and we're going to save that. Now, next time when we come here and it looks at this and says that this is your closest setting, and it'll tell us that it's uh, HD TV setting. We can come up here where we our user settings are stored and we can go right straight back to that transcode that we've already worked up. And again, this, this would give you uh, from 300 megabytes down to 35 megabytes. I want to show you these real quick. I've already saved slight variations on this. If we were, let's say, at a, on a landline or something and, and uh, we had a better inter internet connection, we could actually use a slightly better instead of targeting 10 this one would target it at 20 and that would give us a file that's 69 and I just want to show you these real quick because uh, these are always options this is a judgment call depending on your internet connection and your situation you obviously want to send us the best possible file here's what a 30 a target of 30 would look like it would give us a file that's 104 megabytes and uh, in this case, though, let's go ahead and output one, assuming that you're, let's say, on a boat or uh, you have a mobile hotspot and uh, not a great connection to the Internet. Uh, 35 megabytes is actually going to give you a really good-looking file, and you can see it's almost 10 times smaller than the camera original. Um, at this point, we're ready to export it. Uh, H.264 is a very sophisticated transcode. It, it usually, from my experience, takes about two times the time of the clip. So a minute clip would take us two minutes to transcode if we were doing H.264 without any variable bitrate. When we do a variable bitrate, if we're doing a two-pass, it's going to actual, actually double that time. So a minute clip that would take two minutes to transcode at an H.264 setting would then take four minutes. In this case, we have a 30-second clip, so because it's H.264, it's going to take a minute to transcode it, and because we're going to do a variable bitrate two-pass, it should take about two minutes to export, depending on your processor. And we're going to go ahead and say export. Once it has a moment, it's going to take a look at the clip, and it's going to estimate the time that it's going to take to transcode that file, and you can see we're hitting right around two minutes, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to when this file is done instead of making you watch this for two minutes. Okay, and the file's almost done there. You see, uh, once it's done, we'll go ahead and minimize Premiere. We'll go to our desktop because we know that's where we saved it. And we'll click on the file. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way, and I'm going to go ahead and play this for you. Uh, again, this is a spot that I've added together for broadcast. We've taken a 300 megabyte file and we've knocked it down to 35 megabytes and you're going to see the quality is pretty good. Now my processor is actually running screen capture software, so there might be a little jerkiness in the video because my processor, processor can't handle these two uh, programs, this capture program and this uh, HD video at the same, same time. but the jerkiness is not actually in the real file, but here we go. All Hands Magazine. It's back and better than ever. Filled with stories and information that matter to you. If you're motivated, this is where you need to be. I'm one of two of the Master Alcom on the ship, which is pretty cool because to say that I drive around a multi billion dollar ship, not many people can do that. Where you want it, when you want it. Check it out at www.ah.mil. Four sailors, five sailors. There you go. Looks pretty good. I hope that helps. Thanks.